I want to start with a few of your recent predictions that have really rocked the recruiting world. So let's take a look at this week's falling bombs and start with quarterback Houston Longstreet. You dropped one this week for him to Texas A&M. Yeah, Texas A&M has been the program to beat since January. Got him on campus the first weekend of February and got him back a couple weekends ago. But that's not to say there hasn't been major competition for this young man as Auburn has gotten him to campus a couple times this spring. Also took visits to Ole Miss and Oregon. If Oregon does not win this recruitment on Sunday when he announces his college decision, they are going to continue recruiting him. He had two fantastic visits to Auburn, Josh, once for mm -hmm. a spring practice. And then he returned this past weekend for A-Day. He loves the way Auburn practices. He loves Hugh Freeze's offense and the continuity within that program. But his best relationship is with Colin Klein and Texas A&M. This is the guy Mike Elko and that new staff targeted right when they got to College Station. They sat down, watched film, rushed out to see him in California and saw him throw. He would be a huge get for this new staff as they try and build this program up with their recruits and players. He's been to A&M twice, has a really good relationship with Mike Elko in addition to Coach Klein. I like the way it's trending for A&M here, but still, as I talk to you on Thursday morning, nothing final. Auburn's still battling here, and then Oregon and Ole Miss just aren't going to go away. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was going to be Auburn for Longstreet, but I trust your pick there. Um, another one that kind of shook the recruiting world was earlier this week, you put in a pick for Edge Zion Grady to Miami. Now, Zion Grady was one of the big uh, decommits when Nick Saban retired, kind of in the wake of that, and it looked like maybe Georgia was going to pick him up, but now you're predicting Miami. Yeah, I think that this most recent visit to Miami was another reminder why he's so high on the Hurricanes, the connection with Jason Taylor, Jason Taylor's track record as a player, the excitement around the Miami program, the trajectory under Mario Cristobal and the staff, the way they make them feel at home, these awesome visits. Miami, in my opinion, is the one to watch for Zion Grady in his recruitment heading into the official visits. Georgia is the other school that's near the top of his list. And then he's also high on Auburn and Tennessee, mm -hmm. Florida State. He's at Florida State this weekend. But Miami is setting the pace right now for Zion Grady. All right, Eric Winters, this one caught my eye because you project him to Auburn. But the reason I was caught off guard is because he's about to make a decision here. So are you predicting Auburn and Auburn soon? Well, teaming up with colleague Chad Simmons and kind of comparing information – we like where Auburn stands. He's been to Auburn a couple times this spring, always gives it big returns, the opportunity to come in and restore Auburn atop college football hierarchy is something that's very exciting to him. He thinks Hugh Freeze and that coaching staff is able to get it done. Uh, but he's going to be at Georgia this weekend for G-Day, maybe another return visit to Miami. So those are some of the other contenders. Has also been to Tennessee recently. But talking to sources, comparing notes with Chad Simmons, I like where Auburn stands for Eric Winters right now. Mm. All right. The next one up was running back JT Lindsay to LSU. Now, I thought uh, James Simon might be the one that's paired up with Harlan Berry, but you're putting in a pick now for JT Lindsay. Explain that one to LSU. Well, he was just offered by the Tigers this week uh, yeah. on campus. My pick joining uh, Shea Dixon and and billy billy embody but you know he was at lsu in march too and he talked about possibly playing and shining on the biggest stage in college football at that time and he just loves this coaching staff he says the coaching staff are winners and they produce great players and the opportunity to do it in state playing for this lsu staff on that stage is very exciting for him mm. All right, Steve, any other picks that you want to mention from this week? There was a bunch. I'm going to link your pick page in the description below so people can go find those. I think you had about 10 or more. Any other picks you want to talk about? Yeah, two picks. Let's talk about 
uh, the first one I made last night, Austin Alexander, a defensive end out of Kentucky, Sean Alexander's nephew. I like where North Carolina stands for him. Ted Monachino and Jason Jones have done a good job in this recruitment for the Tar Heels. He's been on campus a couple times, and he's a top overall target for Mac Brown and company. They love him on the edge. And this is a young man that's not only high on what North Carolina can do for him on the field, but what they can do for him off the field. And then let's see her. Brooks is a exciting receiver out of Millville, New Jersey, who had 22 touchdowns as a junior. He is one of the top pass catchers on Alabama's board. And following another recent visit to Tuscaloosa, where he spent time with Coach DeBoer, Coach Shepard and company, Alabama is the clear team to beat in this recruitment. Kentucky, another top contender for Latsir Brooks, but this is a guy that Alabama covets, and I like where the Crimson Tide stand. Joe Hastings, Andrew Bone, Tim Watts at Bama Online also like Alabama's position for this exciting playmaker. All right, guys, let me know. What do you think of the recent falling bombs, which is the most surprising? Which ones do you like the best? Let me know. Comment section below.